Okay. This uh, meeting of the Town of Stockbridge Planning Board is called to order. Thank you all for attending. Um, uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the last meeting on August 3rd, which uh, Jennifer sent around. Um, as I read them, uh, that third big paragraph, which talks about everybody's vision at, at uh, Kate's request, uh, seems to not include anything from Marie. And um, I, are, are you in yeah, there? Yeah, I am here. Where? I just read it. Yeah, I have no uh, idea. Yeah, I thought we were wrong. I just read it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On the eighth line, right at the end is her name and then her ass. Her vision goes to the next line. I think I was after theory. Oh, yeah. Marie, vision of small development. For oh, okay. I missed it. Okay. So that's my fault. That was kind of like not really wise. Yeah. Um, so I had a, um, as I read the minutes, uh, I noticed that uh, we had, you know, some discussion about visiting um, built sites of the uh, of the uh, lazy bylaw type, and um, I thought it would be good to include that. We had had discussion about that, and then Carl had already had also asked for for a list of the built sites, and I thought that was a really good. Um, Good suggestion and I'd like to include that. Okay well as we've discussed in order to include that we need to um, have a written um, uh, proposal to amend the minutes. So uh, if you don't have that which I would be surprised if you did Kate I think we'll just have to defer action on these minutes until the next meeting. I, um, I didn't have it actually. Have you uh, where is it? Um, hold on. So I'll just read it. Um, I make a motion that the minutes from August 3rd, 2021 be amended to include, there was discussion of visiting sites in Massachusetts where natural and historic resource protection zoning has been implemented. Member Sprague asked for a list of sites. That's okay. a motion. That's a motion. Is there a second? A second. It's been mo moved and seconded. Any discussion of this amendment? Hearing none, um, I think because we've got remote attendees, you have to call the roll. Is that the deal? Yeah. Please. Okay. Uh, Wayne? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Marie? Aye. Bill? Aye. Gary? Aye. <clears throat> Carl? Aye. Kate? Aye. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to come back to your to that uh, point in this amendment, uh, Kate, later, um, uh, because I have spoken with um, Jeff Lacey about exactly that. Um, so um, with that, Amendment included, can I have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? I'll move to, to approve the minutes. And a second? Second. Uh, okay. Bill? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Gary? Aye. Marie? Aye. Wayne? Aye. Carl? Aye. Kate? Aye. Okay. Proof. Thank you. Thanks, Kate, for uh, catching that. Um, so the next item is the uh, 10 Elm Street sign permit. Um, is this yes, yours? Doug. Your Doug. That's Doug. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I'm Doug Goody here. I'm representing Wheeler and Taylor, Inc. Um, we moved from 44 Main Street to 10 Elm Street. Um, we do have a temporary sign in a location that was previously used. I think in the application, there was no dimensions of the sign, but if you want to know, it is a temporary sign that's planning to be replaced, but that temporary sign is appears to be 27 inches wide by 30 inches tall. Some of the other questions. So I'm here 
tonight to get clarification on what is available for signage in that building so that we can make the appropriate sign. So the pictures in this application, Doug, are of what it looked like before you moved in. Correct. It's a previous tenant. Um, so they were the real estate uh, tenant. We have a real estate and insurance division as well. Um, so we are looking, you know, they appear to have three different types of signage. Um, I'm not quite sure if we really need three. Um, but we're just looking for clarification what would be appropriate for that building. And, um, you know, we would like to have a sign and then some type of sign that can be updated that would have some real estate impact. Meaning pictures of? Pictures of a listing that could be added and subtracted on an ad needed basis in a set and defined area. Which is what you had in your old location. Yeah, we had the, we had a window. It was, it, yeah, we had a window that had displays. And by the way, those are only there until the end of August. They will be removed. It was sort of thought it would be better to have something than nothing on the mm. street. Mm. So they are there temporarily and they'll be taken out in less than two weeks. But that space is now empty. This space is currently undergoing renovations, I believe. Okay. So and there's yeah, so there's no signage per se on that those windows and so on. So what you're proposing is to put a sign presumably saying Wheeler and Taylor, uh, real estate and insurance or whatever. Correct. Where would you put it? Well, that's the thing. Is, on the post? Well, that's the thing is right now there's something on the post. The post has been there forever. It does not go over the sidewalk. It's within the green space of right. the building itself. You know, it's a pressure tree post. It's not really pretty. I think it would be mm -hmm. nice if we dressed it up a little bit and maybe made it a little bit more New England and boxed it in with some wood and painted it white. But that's sort of another discussion. So I would think that would be a nice location there. Yeah, this one here. Yeah, and, and, and I do have more photos if somebody doesn't have any photos. Or, it's got a WT on it. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't remember what you have. Yeah. Have this one. So that's. We have this. Okay. Yeah. And then there's oh, just some, there's some oh, yeah. newer signs here, too. Yeah, this post is oh, there that, now with WT. So Doug? Yes. Um, I just like to clarify that in terms of the style of the sign and how it, whether it's New England or contemporary or what, um, we don't, we don't weigh in on that. That's yeah. entirely up to you. Okay. Yeah. So, so I think the sign post is preferable for you know for for a generic sign that says we own Taylor Insurance and Real Estate, and then I think. Which this does not. This one, this one is a temporary sign that would be removed. I see. Replaced with something permanent. And and is this twenty seven by thirty? That is twenty seven by thirty. Yeah. So same size. So well, it could be whatever whatever is deemed appropriate. Uh, that so in other words, yes, we could put something back twenty seven by thirty if that's that appears to be about five point six square feet according to my calculation. I haven't done the calculation. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, it seems pretty appropriate for the signpost. Let's put it that way. And so you'd hang nothing on the building. Well, no. So that's one form of signage. And then I don't know if, if the listings were permanently affixed to the side of the building in a framed area or if they were hung similar to a fashion that Kinder Hook did. I, it's up to. So it's, so it's really up to our bylaw and if you want, I can share that so people can see what what the wording is. So, Doug, what you could do is you could do four square feet on the posts, and then you have additional square footage that you could do um, against the building. Forty-eight in the bylaws. If you are looking at size. So the four square feet on the post is limited by by um, the projection sign? Is that considered a projection sign? Yes. If it's, if it's, yeah, if it's on posts, it's considered projection. But it, it goes on to say a projection sign may be projected over a public or private way. So a lawn is a way? 
Well, I, 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 your point is well taken, um, but it's, it's not, if it's not, it's, if it's in the green, I see what you're saying, but on the other hand, it's not. It's, 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 it would also make the sign very tall and ungainly. Yeah, it's so, not projecting over your sidewalk or your walkway. No. It's just on your lawn, like right. when we had Casablanca's across the street. It's yeah. just on your lawn. Right, so that's big. So I thought that sign would be part of just I, part of the 30 square feet. And not, not necessarily yeah. subject to a fourth square foot limit. Mm -hmm. It would be subject to a four square foot limit because it's an independently standing sign. Bill, was can we amend the sign bylaw now? Is this but it hasn't been approved yeah. by the attorney general? No, we didn't. Oh, we didn't do that. We didn't get to it. Oh, okay nor did we get to the downtown parking one. The one that was approved at town meeting was the uh, driveway. Yeah. All right. So we're working with the old bylaw. Page 48. Yeah, thanks. So Doug, if you look, read down, you'll see the projecting sign shall be at least seven feet above the surface of the way. It's not the way. It's not over the way. Excuse me, let me finish please. The next, the next is... Um, shall be securely fastened to the building, but there's also something about not more than 10 feet tall. So. I, 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 would, I, would, take, I would note that the bylaw doesn't really seem to address the specifics of a sign on a post. Um, you're talking about a projecting sign as being something coming off of a building, really. That's what they're talking about. No, I think Doug is talking about an independent. Doug, are you talking about an independently standing sign? Oh, when I say yeah. when I when I, I meant that's what the bylaw is addressing, and it's not really talking about a sign post. Well, here it is. Um, so, for any non-residential principal use, one sign not to exceed four square feet in area. But, you know, there's just some really weird inconsistencies. So, so my sign would have to start seven feet off the ground. Yeah. And um, it, it, just, it just doesn't seem very, they don't, all the rules don't seem to really agree with each other. It's definitely a problematic violation. Can I ask, can I ask how tall your sign, how, how tall that signpost is now, by the way? Just out of curiosity. You know, I don't really know it's the existing signpost, and according to the photos, you know, it looks like it would be seven feet tall, maybe. Yeah. You know, it, it's seven or eight feet tall. I mean, I don't know. It's the existing signpost that it, that's there. It just, it just seems funny that. Look at um, um, I mean, so the alternative, if, if the signpost becomes an issue, um, the Sign, other tenant had, 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 had a sign swinging from the uh, front porch. I mean, that's fairly that's that's a that's a reasonable alternative. Right. Uh, but at the same time, I think off the signpost seems a little bit sorry. more sorry New England -y than having a sign hanging off the porch. It seems a little. So, Doug, your first choice is to have a sign on a post that's facing Elm Street or that's? It would be perpendicular to Elm Street, similar to the phone. You don't, you, I'm sorry, you don't, okay, you don't have, and um, Carl, you don't have the benefit of some of the new photos. I um, did, oh, there's some new photos, okay. Yeah, um, but yeah, it would be perpendicular to Elm Street and um, it would be parallel with the walk. Well, this is I think the it's same size as the previous. I think it's kind of a combination of exactly the same. I don't know why. We're why? I mean, we approved this. this previous sign, correct? Yep. So, what's the problem with doing the same thing with a different lettering on it? It's it's more than four feet. It's, it's more than four square feet. One. But if I thought we had just done this. Isn't it grandfathered the size? No, no that's incorrect. There's no grandfathering, unfortunately, but. Um, I mean, Doug, it sounds to me like you kind of want something in between. Um, if you look at the shared screen sec 
section 6.8.7 AI. And so I would say that you could approach it from that standpoint. That's a, but that's a resident zoning district. That's I'm asking a resident zoning district. No, yeah, down below oh, is business. That's true. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a residential zoning district. Yeah. Yep. yep. Down below is the business one. Oh, 8. Yeah. No, that's true. 6.8.8. 8. 8. Yeah. So it's, it's really coming down to like, you know, I and double I, you know, it's, it's, it's in that area. Yeah. And I'm just not quite sure why, you know, the three I, the four square feet is really coming into play when I says that they're going to be up to three signs using 30 square feet. Yeah. Right. Yep. Not to exceed four square feet. Well, I think the intention is is that you know a separate um, standing sign will not 49. be larger than four square feet. Yeah, feet. Thirty feet. Where is that, Kate? Four, four feet. feet. It'll send the three. following page, Gary. Yeah. No, I, th I think it's the you know I think it's the intention that standing four. signs will not be that triple bigger than four square yeah, feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. And that you can have. Um, you know, additional signage against the building. But, but the only thing that the, the problem I have, is, or the question I have, there's a lot of definition. There's not a projecting sign is not a defined thing here, and there's a lot of talk about projecting signs being so tall, and the police department and the fire department have to prove <laughs> that it, there has to be insurance on it. It, it. it sort of seems like this is. A, it looks like I'm being put into a projection sign. That is not really the intention of a, a small sign being put on private property, you know, that is a that the police department has to be involved and the building inspector has to be involved and I have to have insurance on a sign on my own property. But Doug, I, I yeah, think you shouldn't have to. You know, I, it's, it's, it's not over a public way. Yeah. That's the difference, which I think would lead to not yeah, requiring police, fire, and highway department approval. It's just in your Because it does not project yeah. over it's a public in way. You're in the, it's in the grass. Mm -hmm. It doesn't project outside your property. So it's not a projecting sign. Right. It's like the Casablanca <laughs> sign we just approved. A projecting sign would be a sign that projects over someone else's property. This is not a or, or a projects. public way. Or, or the sidewalk. Or, yeah, or the the sidewalk. Sidewalk. it's not a projecting sign. Right. It projects from a post. Yeah. Or from a wall. It's a projecting That's sign, but it's not over a public sign. way. Right. It's a projecting sign. It's just not over a public way. That's the key. It's a projecting yeah. sign. It's not, not over it's public ways. Post. I think 6.8.8. But I don't think you need to. Three. Um, the bylaw doesn't really fit Doug's request. So that's a problem with the bylaw. Why is this a problem? Oh, so then let's oh but the three, a three refers a to a wall sign. Yeah. 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 When that doesn't work. Approved. I thought we just did this. We did. Casablanca, we just did. We did this, this one particular too. one. Mm -hmm. This Kinderhook one. Yeah, we did. We looked yeah. at that. Yeah, when did we approve that? that? Mm -hmm. Yes. I think Why was that approved this. if this five point what is it, five point seven feet? That's yeah. About five and a half square feet or so, I think. Isn't that what you said? Yeah, the, the, the temporary sign is about 5.6 square feet, according to my calculation. Is that the limit of the signage you're going to have on the building? No. Well, because the thing is, it depends what you define signage is. So if on the wall I was to have a half a dozen eight and a half by 11 listings, that could be construed as signage, I would think. Yeah. So, so would I'm you not going to say that that's the only sign I would have, because we have to have some type of signage when you walk by, you see something of interest yeah. and something you might want to walk up and, and look at. So with that being said, no, that one sign on the sign post would not be the only sign. Would it matter whether the, those signs for listings was inside or outside? Well, the only problem is there only, there's, only, there's only one window facing uh, Elm Street. Yeah, that and the control. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's inside. Yeah, and, I see. You and it's dark in there, so you never see it. Yeah, it's so, up on the porch under the roof. You know, really have a few signs. I, right. I, I would probably say, you know, we don't probably need three signs, but we probably would need a sign that shows our place of business mm -hmm. and some sign that has some type of real estate listing capability for us. It'd fall under the 30 feet with those. Yeah. Yeah. Are you imagining like a case or something like that outside or um, for the for the real estate listings? You know, Carl, flex, we're flexible. We want to do what everybody thinks is appropriate. I mean, previously, Kinderhook had signs that was hanging off of the, um, 
Right there. And it's hanging off the, 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 the front of the porch. Like where you'd put a blind. Yeah, we're, yeah. So we could do the same thing, or we could try to fix something to the wall. Um, well, if you just want to do whatever everybody feels appropriate. If you're going to stay under 30 feet with everything else, mm -hmm. and this is an existing sign that hasn't seemed to be too much trouble, yeah. would, I mean, would anybody think of letting this sign be the sign or the size that Doug wants with the condition that anything on the building is going to fall under the 30 foot maximum in the future or with whatever else you decide to do on the building? Would that be a consideration? Yeah, that, that works, works for me. me. And for me too. Are we, if we're looking at 6.8.8 AI, bottom of page 48? Right. Sure. Talks about, except as otherwise provided in, in 6.8.8 A3, all such signs shall be attached flat against the wall. No, that's right. The building. All such signs. Oh, and no sign shall project over the parapet wall. That's correct. That's that's correct. correct. The wall. We don't have a wall. We don't have a parapet wall. I mean, I don't necessarily agree with this, but that's what the bylaw says. So when does the when does the area that is on the post get counted? If, if you're counting only signs that are flat against the wall, when does the sign well, that's on the post get counted in square feet as the total? Wayne, I think it's a gap in this bylaw. It's an interesting, it's just never come up. We always thought there was this grandfathering thing, but um, it turns out there isn't. And in this case, you know, since the sign was, well, I guess there is a sign there now. Yes. Well, actually, if let me let me be clear. Um, 688AI says all such signs shall be attached flat against the wall, except as otherwise provided in 688A3. On page uh, 49, little three, in lieu of more than of no more than one wall sign yeah. per lot, one projecting sign, mm -hmm. not to exceed four square feet, is is permitted. Uh, it, uh, and it talks about projecting over a public or private way, not an issue. But we don't, right. Uh, it has to be seven feet above the surface um, or at such other height that the board of selectmen shall set after a consultation with police fire. I think that's irrelevant. That's kind of over the projecting way, um, though, right? A projecting sign shall be securely fastened to a building signpost. Check that. Um, and then this business of checking with the building code and the fire department. I think you're okay yeah. if you do a. I think if you do three, number three. Yeah. And then you can have one more wall sign, which would be the list. So the list. I could, I could put four feet on the signpost and 26 feet on the walls. Square feet. Yes. Yes. Ooh, that's what I think so. That's how this reads, I think. Yep. It's, it's technically you can, though Doug is concerned about the word projecting and what exactly that means and then the requirement for liability insurance. Projecting is defined in 6.84a, kind of. I mean, it says uh, they are displayed upon or adjacent to a public way. Yeah, well, I wouldn't consider that, well, adjacent, I suppose the sidewalk, but. Yeah, I know. I think we're okay. With I don't the, think it uh, projects over the sidewalk. No, it doesn't at all. It just so, says it's near it. I, or the other way is you could have four <clears throat> feet on the sign po on the post, and, up to, yep. and then two other signs on the building attached to the building, consisting feet. of twenty six feet. Not to, yeah, sort of like what it looks like um, uh, the Kinder Group did. Patrick, where do you see that definition? Oh, well, it's not really that definition. That's what the requirements are. Under general regulations. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's 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 your uh, that's it, Doug. That's where you um. Thanks, Patrick. 
But again, it's free, a, just going down to G then, a freestanding sign shall not exceed 10 feet. There is no such thing as a freestanding sign then. It's either a, it has to be a- um, Sandwich board? No, no, that, that there, therefore it has to be a projecting sign. Because no, no other place does, does allow a freestanding sign, right? Standing so, free standing, so there's no such thing as a freestanding sign. So this, a freestanding sign should say a projection sign shall not exceed 10 feet because there's no such thing as a freestanding sign. Yeah. This is back where in the old days where I thought we were, yeah, we, when we were talking about revising some of these laws, you know, like a picture is worth a thousand words. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's, I, 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 I'd welcome I'd welcome a little graphic input. I think um, what we're heading towards is uh, perhaps allowing, at least in my mind, a four foot sign on the post up to up, up to four foot. feet. Yes, um, not projecting over the sidewalk, um, no higher than seven feet, and then two signs attached to the building, not exceeding in total twenty six square feet. So let's, can I get clarification on the uh, old Kinderhook sign? There's a sign hanging from the, um, the porch. porch. The edge of the porch. Is that against the, is that on the bill? Is that? It says it's it has to be affixed to the wall. Well, that, that's what I'm it's, it's not affixed to the wall. It's attached to the building. <laughs> right. It's a hanging sign. Well, but. Oh, freestanding sign. You, <laughs> you could argue that it's projected. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't argue that. I, I don't. Real estate technically two separate. Technically two separate corporations. Well, then you then could do the multi. Exactly. Uh, I asked you that earlier. You don't You're covered well, with. So I'm fine with that approach. Um, but Bill, can you please convey this this nuance to um, um, what's uh, Phil Arnold? Uh, sure. I mean, you see that there's a problem here. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I do. So I think. Um, no, we don't. I think the what's hanging in the Kinderhook picture uh, would need to be attached to the wall. Okay. Uh, and it's not quite clear where the other Kinderhook sign is. It looks like that's hanging from the porch too. Well, I think it, we're going with the, with the triple I though, right? Yes. So that means they can have up to a four foot uh, square sign on the post, but then in lieu of not more than one wall sign, so there can only be one wall sign. No, I think that's not right. I think it's in lieu of not more than one wall sign. In other words, leaving two wall signs, you can take one wall sign and turn it into a projecting sign. That's how I read it. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah. You see? No. It, it says, in lieu of not more than one wall sign, it's not very felicitous, but I think what it means is you can give up one wall sign and use that to uh, create a uh, projecting sign, with leaving you with two wall signs. Yep. That's how I read it. Does anybody else? That's correct. You can, that makes no sense. more than, and Gary, it says, in I for not any non-residential principal use consisting of a single establishment, no more than three signs. Oh, I know that piece. I got that. Okay, let's let's do it. So are you are you okay, Gary, with it? I am. Okay. Are you okay, Doug? Yeah, so I think yeah, we can work we'll have to just put a not to exceed four feet on the signpost. Yeah. And then we can do whatever we want as long as it's no more than two. 20. Two signs not exceeding 26 feet. Right. right. Attached to the building. Attached to the building. Yeah. Right. I think, yeah, that, that's fine. I think we can, and yes, we want to do that. You know, okay. and Doug, I can't, the thing is the liability thing, I have no idea what the town has been doing. For all I know, they're not doing anything. That's only if they're too tall. But I can't that's really, right. we can't really speak to that. I think that uh, that liability thing uh, is really relevant to signs that project over a public or private way. Right. And this this does not. That's the so liability part. Right? I, I don't think yeah. that that's no. um, applicable in this case. Mm -hmm. I don't think you need insurance. No. Uh, I mean, other although he does have a ton of property. <laughs> yeah, you could get it easily, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> 
it be signed for okay? public yeah. or private way. Do you have that, Jennifer? Have I, I, I would just like to comment that, um, you know, we've had talk about hanging signs, projecting signs, freestanding signs, building the signs attached to a building and signs adjacent or on a public way or adjacent to the public way. And uh, no wonder we're confused. Um, I think that uh, something, you know, some clarification would be a goal for us to look toward in the future so that, uh, you know, these conversations could become a little bit brisker. Yeah, I, you know, we, we did do a lot of work on a signed bylaw. I know. Uh, I, don't, I don't have it with me at the moment, but I think we were close to some agreement on overall on a new sign, a replacement signed bylaw. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't quite get there in time for a town meeting, uh, but I, I mean, I'd have to go back and review that draft that uh, Phil Arnold did for us. Yeah, but, but there I, was some confusing stuff that came up last minute and I felt like it was just rushed through. And yeah. I think that this, this just points out that this is an opportunity to, to further fine tune it. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I'll say is this whole projecting sign, I think it is a little limiting. I would hate to see something happen, like the red line in has a beautiful projecting sign in front of the building. And I would hate to see that have to be removed if something, if the red line in ever changed hands yeah. or any type of ownership change, I think they would have to remove that beautiful sign. And, and if the red line in was limited to a four square foot sign, besides trying to put something on the building, I think it'd be very hard to accomplish. Yeah, I agree 100% with you, Doug. That's been on my mind and it was something that um, I wanted to see us address. I just, there was a lot going on with that bylaw. Okay. Thank you for your time. Sorry it took so long. Thank you, Doug. Not your fault. Not a problem. Well, we you. need to, uh, need to approve vote. it. Yeah, so um, can I have a motion to approve? Uh, this application, um, well, we're not really right. He has to reduce it. So we have to see the reduced sign. I don't know. That's the way we've been doing it. I hate to mm -hmm. even bring it up, Doug, but that's fine. we've, yeah, if you, yeah, we could do that. Why well, don't we? Well, we don't need to, as long as we don't need to actually see it. If, as long as it is, that's, the square feet. that's true. Tell me. Yes, but I'm didn't we do with that, that with the lost I'm land? We made them it. come back with their signs. Well, what well then they did completely something else. So. It was a very different context. <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to go yeah. there. But, um, but we've done other signs where they have to come back and they show us exactly what the sign looks like. Yes, yeah, with the dimensions. We, and I don't know. If we dimensions, yes. <laughs> but do we have anything to say about content? No, no, just the dimensions and where it goes. So, I mean, you can use red ink, you can use pink ink, you can do italics or block, you can have a picture, you can do anything you want within four square feet. I mean, Doug, do you have the application right there? If you can just change it to four square feet, I think we can proceed. Does anyone re see any reason why we can't? It doesn't, he doesn't have any, there's no um, options on your side. Well, I'd have to change on your well, application. There was no the, the, the second and third sign in theory have not been established, right? Because I don't even know what the areas are appropriate on the front of that building right. or on the side of the building. Well, why don't we sign? Why don't we just set it aside till Doug comes back with the final? Yeah, yeah, all your signs probably come back with what you want. Other signs, no, no. we know that's temporary. Uh, yeah. And that you're working on it. Okay. Yeah, so I'll come back. Okay. This Very good. Does it really say about your size what you gave me here? Okay. So if you fill it out, so that I'll fill it out with the two or three appropriate signs. Yeah. Okay. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. Yeah, we, I think we need to have Phil redo the whole sign up the bottom. Yeah. Girl. Yeah. Um, quick question, Jennifer, when you get these um, materials in, can you post them to, or ask, is it Teresa who does that? Ask, right. the, ask her to post the, this um, requests to the um, town website, the way, you know, as packets, the way the select board is doing. Okay. I'll see you. <clears throat> 
there wasn't there wasn't any information posted for the upcoming um, for May either. Well, we got it. We got it. You mean? But you're yeah. saying it wasn't, it on wasn't the website. posted on the website, but we all got the information. Yeah. Well, for for interested for the interested public, um, you, you you sort of need to make that available. It's available at the meeting tonight. Yep, they can come to our meeting. I mean, if they want to know meeting. about it, they can come or zoom in. They can see what the topic is. Right. Yeah. People like to, you know, be able to see the material in advance and, you know, and then if there are butters, they, they need to be able to oh. access oh. it. Uh, butters have always called me or emailed me and asked for the information. So I have given it to people to ask. I know. We're moving into the 21st century here. <laughs> Let's move on to the next item, which is the uh, Form A for the properties on Old Tree Farm Road. Are you out? Yeah. Welcome. Thanks. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. sure, please. Thank you. That was an interesting discussion about this. So, I why we have so few <laughs> coming to our meetings. I understand the troubles with it, but yeah. yeah. Um, so, hopefully, this is clear enough to see. But um, so, we've done some work for. Uh, the Ninkler property, and we were before you in January of this year, I think it was, showing an earlier plan which you endorsed, uh, dividing what was the original Ninkler property into two, two lots. Um, and what we show here is similar to that original uh, plan, but it's different, different in a little bit of a respect. The primary issue that's come up is that actually providing on access to the new building lot, the new space is back here, mm -hmm. um, was not practical because of wetlands both to the north of this pond and also to the south of this pond um, to create a new driveway access across either of these uh, areas. And in particular, you know, if it were to be entirely on what's now parcel B, it would have had to come up this way. Crossing mm -hmm. that brook would have been uh, um, almost impossible from a wetland permitting perspective. Uh, and so the Minklers came up with a plan to basically share a driveway. Uh, Tim Minkler is the primary person I've been dealing with and the idea is that his son is building a house on this parcel. And they've Which now parcel? built a, a hey. parcel B on our plan. Uh, the driveway He's built a driveway coming off of his existing driveway and wrapping around. Marshall. But in doing so, it crosses into land of Burnbaum. The existing line between Burnbaum and Minkler is this line that runs across. Mm -hmm. And so this plan shows parcel C is going to be conveyed from Burnbaum to Minkler. And parcel D in exchange is going to be conveyed from Minkler to Burnbaum. So there's a swap of two smaller pieces of land that don't have any frontage on Old Tree Farm Road, nor do they have enough area to meet the zoning bylaw, but because they're going to be combined with adjacent lots, they are not mm -hmm. separate building lots. Mm -hmm. These two lots still have enough area and frontage to meet the zoning bylaw as they did before. And uh, there is no net change to what we had presented to you previously, which is that there'll be, instead of one building lot that Minkler had, he'll now have two building lots. So um, I have the application form that's been signed by Minkler and, and by Burnham. Right. And the shared yes. driveway, two building lots and a shared driveway. That's there right. be a mm -hmm. formal right of way to that property? They'll have to have easements to make that, make that work. That's right. So if someone else bought this, they'd have to be able to get there. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so and I wasn't okay. sure, do you have a fee for this? Is that, you don't have a okay. fee for this. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> you bring any money? Hey, look in the violence. <laughs> oh, there's some right here. So if Minkler sold his property. This one? Yeah, yeah. the driveway. It would be a right of way so that yeah. e either one of these lots would have to be able to access their property. It would just be That's a shared driveway. Of the sale. Yeah, after this exchange of property is accomplished, let's say Minkler owns 
all this together. And I don't know whether he, in fact, has a building permit yet for, for building this I don't new know. house, but okay. that's yeah. kind of immaterial. I don't know. Right. For the moment, let's just say that this swap happens. So Minkler now owns a strip down here. He owns this up to here and including mm -hmm. that driveway, right? And owns all of this. And then at some point, he's going to need to get a building permit for this new house. And uh, I don't know if the building inspector will require that a deed be conveyed according to this plan or whether he can get a building permit just having it in common ownership. But as soon as it goes into separate ownership and as soon as somebody else owns this house, yes. let's or, say or son, that house. Yeah, or that house, then all those easements have to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't have to happen ahead of time? I don't think for this to happen, no. Does the right. driveway have to have any setback to deer bombs? Uh, I think you can go right to the line. Right, because yeah. it looks like it does. That's yeah, I think yeah. pretty sure you can go right and to This the can't line. be a driveway to here? It's 20 feet wide, and there's large maple trees on both sides of it. Mm -hmm. So it's it was deemed, and there's also, I think, maybe utilities that run up there. I'm not sure about that, but uh, that was deemed too long and too difficult to actually accomplish to make that work. So 20 or 20, 50? It's 20. Oh, I thought yeah. at one time I looked at that and it was oh. 50. Yeah, it's only 20 feet wide. That's really narrow for, mm -hmm. you know, I this need some, more frontage. And, yeah. It's yeah. also, is that 500 feet long? Yeah, that's cool. That's 500 yeah. from, from here to there. And then another, whatever it would be to get to the house. Which would require its own permit. How long is no, the driveway the easement yeah. going yeah. What we're doing is around? Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, How many feet is that from where your finger is all the way around? That's just on private property. Yeah, they'd have to get a, a. I don't know. It's probably three or four hundred feet. You know, coming around this way. That's yeah. probably. I mean, the other. Th th yeah, the other issue with that is, is they'd have to come for a special permit for a, a driveway exceeding five hundred feet. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. To, to this house. Yeah. yeah. If it's only four hundred feet. Then. For our purposes tonight. We're just approving or disproving the, yes, the, the this swap. Right. This, swap, this swap, swap of land, yes. that's the only thing we're, we're approving we tonight. We're, we have nothing we to do with the driveway. Need to consider that's right. right. That's right. We don't have, the that's, a, that's a later deal for right. them. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. That's, okay. That's their issue later. So I'm, can I move? Um, Are we ready? We have to wait for Jennifer to come back. Oh. <laughs> Can't do anything without Jennifer. That's for sure. <laughs> right. what's, what's the story with the funny dog leg that crosses the driveway what what's that about is that about maintaining like a sufficient frontage frontage oh i see yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. down here yeah right. yeah nice map it's nice and clear that is yeah yeah and your explanation was yes good Concise. i didn't quite yeah. get it when and I will this and, and will this affect voting patterns in the town <laughs> well this what like <laughs> voting patterns. could give you another voter where does this road go <laughs> there is you it go. a dead end Three so, yeah. yeah it's got like a, a little end? cul-de-sac at the end oh okay it goes oh. around yeah. This is what I can. We can go ahead and yeah. just, you know, but I can ask him something that's going on here. I think we can go ahead with the motion, even though Jennifer's there. She can grab it off the recording. No, let's wait for Jennifer. Yeah. She'll, she'll be right back. Yeah. With the, um, the markers. There she comes. There you are. We're waiting for you. Oh, you are? <laughs> You're going to make a motion. <laughs> Oh, well, we could have called everybody. Oh, I don't know. Oh. She said, wait for Jennifer. <laughs> so I would like to move that we approve this form A um, as presented by Mr. Thorpe. So is, is that the right way to word this? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't mean to I, I understand. But do, do we have to approve asked, a form A? We're being asked to determine and endorse that the planning board approval is not required. Oh, uh, so we don't really have to vote on it. Okay. So we Well, we can vote. vote on the fact on the the issue of whether the um, <laughs> uh, whether uh, to determine and endorse that planning board approval is not required. 
that's what we would should be voting on. That's right. Not that's moving the approval of this. Okay. I, I hate to be a. No, no, we have picker, to. No, we have to do it right. Yeah. If I looking at the language, I think that's what we. So, so you move that. Go ahead. The Why don't you make the motion? Determines and endorses that approval of the sub uh, approval under the subdivision control law is not required. Second. Any further discussion? Um, Jennifer, could you call the roll, please? Yes. Bill? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Marie? Aye. Gary? Aye. Wayne? Aye. Kate? Aye. Carl? Aye. That's everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, we gotta sign it. <laughs> Do we need to sign this now? <laughs> yeah, I would love it if you'd sign a mylar for me. Yeah. I don't, I don't need the other one signed myself, although if one of them's an extra. And I don't know if you have your own special pen. That's fine. Yeah, a special pen. It's pretty good. For the mylar? <laughs> it works on the mylar here. Great. Okay. All of them. Just do this one right now so we can, yeah. <clears throat> Here's a problem with the remote meeting. <laughs> Carl, are you still out of Fort Devon? Pardon? Are you still oh, out of yeah, you know, I'm going to be here for for you know for an indeterminate amount of time. Um, you know, honestly, I'd be. Um, I mean, not that I'm um, loving the neighborhood, but um, the job part is nice and. Uh, so, uh, so, so well, hopefully it'll last for a little while longer, but uh, I really appreciate um, your willingness to kind of let me dial in here. Um, it's sort of what's happens. And, and frankly, I, 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 I have to say this has been, you know, an inclusive um, process. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I would love to be in the same room with you all and I will be again, but. Uh, okay. I'm the last one. Over. Carl, I don't have an excuse other than I was hungry and I wanted my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No, no, but I, I don't know. It, 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 I don't know that we need excuses. It's, I think the fact of the matter is like, you know, I think we need to figure out how to make, make, make things work. I'll so. have to do these, Jen. Definitely. I'll have to do these. Oh, boy. We should always <laughs> that sort of facilitate remote participation too. Yeah. Well, for the moment, it seems to be, you know, it seems to be, it seems to be uh, carrying the day, which I think is good. This is the first in-person meeting I've been to. We only two. This is yeah. Our second. Yeah. yeah. I have to say, on the, on the one hand. The Zoom meetings have been very convenient you know, to be able to attend at home, but when I presented these things, the problem then became, how do I get this signed? How does it get signed? Yeah. Right. In some cases, we last week. Yeah. You know? yeah, but, you, but we, we, have, we have sufficient signatures for quorum, right? I mean, you know. Yeah. You mean, yeah. Oh, for here, yeah. Yeah, we don't have right. right. sometime. Yeah. yeah, sometime. One more. Eight weeks to get a plan signed. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. Okay. Here. And um, not here. No, no of course not. It's nice space to sign. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. and all of yeah. us yeah. seeing each other. Right. Yeah. Dynamic changes, I yeah. think, when you're face to face. Yeah. I agree with that 100%. Right there, yeah. For the mylar, it's just these are just regular copies. Oh, look how tiny! Wow, you write small. I do. Oh, so you can read my signature. <laughs> <laughs> Some people I know. Present company accepted. Good. 
That artwork is interesting, Carl. <laughs> Don't call it that. Yes. Not artwork. Hotel room. <laughs> I know. Good. All set. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I haven't quite seen how it's affixed. I could probably bring a picture. Welcome of to try and pass. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're Lorna yeah. Jones. Very Stan over here. It's very, oh, very you, simple. You, know, yeah. you stop seeing it, you know? Yeah. I haven't looked at it in quite some time. <laughs> it's funny that we need to sign something over which we've made the decision that we have not jurisdiction. <laughs> I do with Teresa sometimes is like Teresa, you want to buy Teresa sign my name and she signs it and initials it. Which is really? Yeah. Oh, gosh. I mean, I'm saying, I'm not a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. we're not. Yeah. 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 Hey, Patrick? Yeah. And so, so are you wanting to go home? Is it something, what is it that she signs in initials for you? She signs my name. I give her permission. I send her emails like, can you sign this for me? And then she initials PZ. Oh, okay. And there's backup documentation. I authorized it. Oh, so we should see if we can do that too. No, oh, it's not sure. That's good. Under normal circumstances, it's not that big. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can do it. I don't know. Yeah. 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 And the last item on the agenda is the discussion of open points in the draft bylaw we've been working on. Um, before we get to that, uh, I mentioned when Kate uh, raised the amendment to the minutes that I'd come back to um, uh, these visits that are referred to. And I have spoken with Jeff Lacey, um, who has uh, projects in Shutesbury, where he's on the planning board, as he's told us, and the town of Wendell, which I think is nearby. Just north of, of Shutesbury. Okay, Thank just you. north of Shutesbury. Um, that he and, uh, and others could um, guide us through if we want to go visit. Now, if more than three of us want to go visit, it's going to be an open meeting law uh, applicability, and we'd have to post and allow, um, you know, and, and the public could come along. Um, and I hope it actually would be more than three of us. I hope all seven of us could go. Um, uh, the dates are not specific, but uh, later this month, the rest of this month, and the first half of September uh, generally would be good times broadly, you know, subject to identifying specific dates and, and, and times. Um, but I asked if it could be, you know, in the next month or so, and he said, yeah, last half of August and the first half of September are, are is a time frame that would work for him and others in these uh, in these towns. Um, does this still sound like a good idea? Would you all mm -hmm. or many of you want to go and try to visit these, yes. these projects? The only thing I see as a problem for me is that, OK, this is what it is. But what would it have been, you know, if it wasn't under this bylaw, what would it have looked like <laughs> under two and four mm -hmm. acre zoning? So what are we comparing to? Okay, this looks wonderful, but was it terrible the other way? Or or was that acceptable? Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I think is gonna be difficult to kind of imagine is, okay, what really is the difference on, in real world terms? I, I think you really can't do that, but I no. think by going to see a project you can at least see what it what that looks like you can't tell what it would look like otherwise hmm. but I don't know, I don't, yeah, if I you don't, really don't like the way it looks then you can not like the, right. you know then you can yeah. say ah, i don't think we want right. this i don't know much about shootsbury but i've spent an amazing amount of time in tewksbury i've worked on um two maybe three films that were there uh um we're um my business is attracted to old mental hospitals and there's a lot of that in tewksbury um, so, uh, um, you know, I'm a little familiar with the town. I think one of the answers to you, Wayne, is that 
assuming that historically the towns have had, you know, some kind of, you know, um, you know, traditional two or a two acre, four acre bylaw uh, zoning, um, then, uh, then, you know, you might be able to sort of like see kind of some of the contrast, you know, with, with, with the newer project, um, just from what's already there. Well, question, right. Wayne, are you interested in seeing the density neutral versus the density negative, or are you interested in just seeing, I mean, the development off of Old Stock Ridge Road is a traditional, um, you know, subdivision development? Right. No, I'd, I guess I would like to see it, um, you know, anyway, uh, but that was just a thought I had to you know, say what if, but maybe it's not realistic. Well, I'm just trying to understand. You mean what? What if it was density neutral, or is that what you? No, I'm saying what if it was developed under two and four acre zoning. Well, we got some pictures of that from Randall Arendt, uh in his presentations to us. He showed us this is what it could have been, or what it could look like, and under, in his case, the open space uh, residential design bylaw. This is what it would it would or did look like uh, applying the principles of his his bylaw, mm -hmm. the preservation of open space, the required preservation of open space, and the call it clustering of residences in a in a concentrated area. No. We saw we saw a visual, you know, there was visual evidence of the one versus the other mm -hmm. in a couple, in several cases, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, numbers of houses and where they're spread out. Did they have, has the board ever toured White Pines? I think it's what, 53 units on a couple hundred acres. And I think it, personally, in my opinion, it was done reasonably well. I, I would love to hear Randall's thoughts on this existing thing in Stockbridge and, and how how this you know bylaw would apply to in, in, re in retrospect, I mean, if they try to repeat this today, because you know, because it's cluster housing with lots of open space, and you know, it's several hundred acres. It had to be, yeah, because it was four. It was so many goes back to it. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's that whole uh, whole yeah, side. My, of my memory is not long enough to remember how controversial that was, but I mean, you had a very gifted designer there, and. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I, I agree with you, Patrick, it's been a success. Um, but, uh, but obviously, you know, I, my, my, again, my memory is not long enough to remember how controversial it might've been or, or what it was like before. You know, we're trying to protect uh, music in our business. So of course everybody embraced it. So, you know, you know all, you gotta, all you need to do is create a rock concert for new and you can build whatever you want. Did um, we have the two and four acre zoning then? I don't remember. I don't, I don't that was, that was, you I know. Think, yeah, I, it, I don't it, know. It, yes. it actually, actually, so I spoke to Jack Spencer, who was very much involved with that, um, about that project. And um, basically, I'm pretty sure it predated, um, actually, I can Google, I'm pretty sure it predated our zoning. And what Jack told me was that. No. When was it built? Like 84. Like 80, 80. It, was, it was permitted in 84 until the mid 80s. Yeah, they so that's the They did 100 permits for duplexes in one night. And then by the early 80s. Jeez. Yeah. I'm sorry, what did Carol say? I said, Alka bought it earlier. David was a nephew. She turned it over to David towards the end of the 70s. He was the architect that Carl's talking about. And by the early 80s, and you're absolutely right, Carol, Mary Flynn was so in favor of it because it got rid of music. Let's build the condos. <laughs> and I think, I think, I think there is the original acreage on um, Make it turn um, around. Is, um, Wheatley was 720. Let me see, where's the cause, right? Carl. Can you guys just do one voice at a time? It's really hard to hear when you're. I only have one voice. Where's Wait, the car right? There were people talking up here. Oh, I don't know. Um, Oak Street. Anyway, let's just say if you're going to tour properties, you have a right here in town. It's over 50 yeah, units. It's on several hundred acres. And I 
Okay. Okay. I'll mention it. Yeah, uh, I mean, I would uh, also say that I think it would be, you know, I'm not trying to change the subject, Bill. I, I want to get back to this, um, you know, this, the site visits, but I also think it would be really valuable to look at um, some of the developments that were done in the standard style that that exist here in Stockbridge. I mean, I just drove into Stone Hill the other day, and it's um, it's it's pretty interesting. I rec recommend taking a look. It is, in fact, Wayne. You've been in, have you been in there? Yes. It's it's that is pretty much the picture that Jeff showed of um, you know the sort of standard standard long driveway type development. Except how much open space is preserved? Zero. Oh, it's, it's not, it's, it's not, you know, it's not good from that standpoint. Not an inch. It's not yeah. that, that's my point. Yeah. 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 Well, it depends what you consider open space, because if the lawns are considered the extent of what you've developed, there's large tracts of woods and mm -hmm. things that have not been touched up there as well. So it depends on what you're calling open space, because there's, a huge area up there and plenty but, of woods. It's just not they, conserved. I mean, somebody could actually no, build on it. It's not, not protected. No, it's not now. Because it's a wetland for sure. Well, the, Part lower, of it is. the lower area is wetland. So that's protected. So the upper slopes where the houses are have houses on them, and they're, some of them are large. Yeah. They are, but, but there's okay. also big pieces of woods that are, right. you know, you can't build another house in there. That's, there that is definitely there. true. Did they ever sell? Did they ever sell the uh, all the lots? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, I didn't look. Did Take a look. Yeah. But aren't those wooded areas privately owned? Yes. By each of the each of the homeowners. So right. They can, they can. Yeah. Okay. Stonehill. Yeah, it is a protected area. It's not protected. I mean, it's it's basically um, in terms of density. It's it's. Um, protected by virtue of, um, you know, the zone that it's in and um, the requirements for, for road frontage. I just think it's worth looking at so that, you know. Absolutely. No, we should take a look. I mean, w I mean, we're just talking about tree farm road. I mean, isn't that the same story? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they've got a lot that now there's two lots. Okay. But you mean the whole the whole of Tree Farm Road, right? The entire Tree Farm Road development. I mean, yeah, yeah, that was that was that was done what in the sixties or something. So, I think it was the seventies. Okay. Yeah. I remember okay. there was a Christmas tree farm there. We have to go back and look at the minutes. <laughs> yeah, you can do that, Carl. When you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I might keep you away, actually. Uh, we, wouldn't like that. we wouldn't like that. Um, so back to the site visit. I, I think it's good advice. Uh, let's look at White Pines and Stonehill Tree Farm Road. Um, and it would be good to have Jeff Lacey look at those um, next time he's with us. Um, but with respect to um, NRPZ um, projects, in Shutesbury and Wendell, do we want to go see the, see them? Uh, a day trip, uh, probably the better part of a day. Um, yeah, they're up by Quabbin Reservoir. They're up par sort of, of parallel to north of Amherst, up by Quabbin. Yeah. So it's a what an hour and a half drive. Probably. Yeah, Belchertown, up kind of above that area. Three hours round trip plus a few hours on site. Um, essentially, an all day trip. Um, do we want to do this? And if so, do you want me to uh, ask um, Jeff to give us some specific dates um, that we can then try to find, uh, you know, that most, if not all of us, can can uh, make it on those days? Yeah. Well, why don't you, you know, why don't, since it's a seven member board, can you see if you can get two dates in case, you know, yeah. flexible? No, no, no. I, I would ask for a, a, a handful of dates, three or four dates at least, 
um, that work for him so that, you know, hopefully we could zero in on at least one of them that works for the majority of us, if not all of us. So he's only done two of these in, in Massachusetts? There's just two? He told me there are two in Shutesbury and one in Wendell. And he, I, I don't know. I mean, we could spend three hours driving uh, to another part of Massachusetts. I'm not sure uh, if there are others farther away, but these are two that are three that were uh, described as, you know, within Close. reasonable driving distance. Okay. We don't want to do can it you, overnight. No, I don't. But can you, Bill, can you ask him for a list of the the places in Massachusetts? I'd sort of be interested to, um, to, see, to see that, that he's, you know, that have, have implemented this. Yeah, I can ask him. Thank you. And I'd also be interested to know, you know, how he, he referred to one town where um, they went with the density neutral and he said it became a developer's bonanza. I'd be interested to see what that looks like too. Can you ask him about that? I can. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm staying right now in uh, sort of, you know, condominium development land around here. Um, it's interesting, um, you know, I mean, you get the pressure of, of being close to Boston and, um, uh, and, 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 and people, people, people are building them and buying them. So, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, it's funny because the landscape around here, even though we're like only an hour drive away from Boston is, um, uh, from the city is, 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 is a lot like Stockbridge. I mean, you're talking about like Harvard, Massachusetts and so forth. I mean, there's an enormous amount of conservation land that, that actually belongs to the college there. And, um, uh, and then there's like these huge tracts of land that were, were, were the military bases. And so, you know, I mean, I, I'm staying in a hotel that's 27, 25 minutes away from my, 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 my offices. It's all trees between here and there. Um, but, you know, the, the kind of, you know, the kind of development that's taking place is interesting to see, you know, there's, there's the remnants of little towns, but then there's also some, 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 some new stuff coming in that, uh, I think we'd be surprised to see, you know, in Stockbridge, <laughs> but. Is Harvard still really beautiful, Carl? It's been about. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, there's a lot of, it's, it's beautiful, it's beautiful out here, but, uh, you know, but it's, 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 it's a funny, it's a funny sort of like, you know, sort of rural turning into suburban place, you know. Um, I'm thinking about the open meeting law and, um, I will get dates from, uh, and I'll ask him these other questions that I've listed, I've uh, noted um, from Jeff. And I can, can I circulate proposed dates mm -hmm. and ask you to answer without violating the open meeting law? We're not, yeah. we're not deliberating, right? Can you <laughs> so I think we're okay. Those, can you do one of those, um, you know how you fill out the survey, what do they call Mon monkey survey? Survey monkey. Survey monkey, where you pick the dates. Me? No, anybody can 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 that I can't do it, possible? but somebody m might be able to. I can also just list them and yeah, you can email me that's back fine. and say that's fine. I like you this. Know. I can't do those dates, but I can do that. Yeah, I'll try to find a date that works for the the largest number of us, and then if it is more than a, a quorum, if it is a quorum, uh, we're going to have to post it and uh, allow members of the public to join us. Should we ask the selectmen? Should we? CC the selectmen on this? I know Roxanne was interested and I don't know about sure. Patrick. Sure, yeah. I, mean, that does, I, I think that, um, you know, having, having, I mean, I don't know, we wanna start running a bus, but the fact of the matter is I think the more people, you know, if this is a, if this is a valid uh, idea, which I think it is, um, you know, sort of the more people are, are are there to take a look, probably the better. You know. Yeah. No, I'm. I didn't mean to discourage public uh, involvement. I just, uh, short of renting a bus, we'd have to. Uh, they'd have to get make their own way to the to the sites. Sure. Or some central meeting place where we could all start from and then drive to the actual places. Okay, I'll I'll come back to you on this. Something feasible, feasible can be figured out. Okay. 
Um, last week or last meeting, we did not really get into um, open points in the in the draft bylaw. I'd still like to be able to do that. I know you all have looked at the draft and I'm sure you all have issues, questions, uh, problems with particular sections or wording. And, uh, and I think it was Marie uh, some time ago who said it would be good to get <coughs> clarity as to what these open points are so we can either knock them off or agree to disagree or at least come to some understanding of um, where we still need to do work. Uh, and <coughs> excuse me, if we're ever going to get to a point where we present a draft bylaw to um, to vote on uh, ourselves and, and then ultimately um, have the town meeting look at it. So um, if you all have your drafts with you, we're looking at draft six, um, the last draft that uh, Randall uh, sent round. Um, or Jeff, I guess. Okay. Jeff, sorry, Jeff. Um, the, I'll start off. On, on page one, 6.24.1B, applicability. Uh, this calls for the, the uh, properties that would be applicable under this bylaw are 20 acres or greater. Is that the right number? Should it be bigger, smaller? We've, you know, um, I think we kicked around whether that's the right number or not. Do, do we have strong views one way or the other? Is 20 acres too small? Are we? Do we want this to be just the bigger? I guess that's the question. Do we want this to be just the bigger tracts of land is yep. as a way of development? Is yeah, 20 I acres guess one of the small? questions is how many 20 acre tracts are there in town? There about yes, I, would, um, um, I vote for a larger acreage and I would I would vote for like 80 acres um, in um, along the lines of thinking of more incremental approaches to growth. Yeah, they're about there. I mean, just just I, 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 I left my papers at the office, of course, but um, there I think there are about 520 acre plus um, tracks. And then there's if you're talking about over 100 acres and goes down to like maybe there's 100 of them. Um, so uh, uh, um, and 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 those start getting very specific, you know. There aren't any over eighty. Right. Eighty is the dark green. There's not many. There's not many over eighty. Yeah. Sixty. Sixty to eighty. There's a few. Yeah. So um, you said five hundred of 20 acres or more? Maybe, no, maybe, maybe I'm getting it wrong. I'm sorry. I think maybe it's 100 over 20 acres. And yeah, then it's, awesome. like, it's like one page of, uh, of, 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 over, of over 80 or 100. 20 is the light green. Yeah. Yeah. 20 to 40 is the light green. 40 is this color green. Mm -hmm. 60 to 80 is this, and 80 is the dark. The There's dark. very few. Yeah. Dark. What if we did 60 and then or greater? These yeah. are. Yeah, I think 80 seems a little large. 60 seems. 60. 50 or 60 seems about right yeah. to me. It, it, it um, doesn't bother the small owners, but mm -hmm. uh, captures larger plots. That's all. So that's where the system falls in. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, he's at 80 plus. They were 80 because they were a cottage era. That had yeah. to be 80 right. at that point. Well, I'm just saying that if this, if we make that standard, then this overlaps into what we said we were going to do would be the cottage era estate. So I'm just making that. Unless we change, unless cottage era has a different. Yeah, the just you may block. the cottage era may have something to yeah, do with um, part, part, date build or something. Yeah. Right, than just a large acreage. Right. Right. Where yeah. do I find a copy of this map that you're holding? Um, this is the this is the this map that we got from Berkshire Regional Planning. Maybe be, it was probably before you were on the okay. board. We all have. One. I'm very interested in that. Okay, great. Um, Jennifer, can you get 
a copy of that for Carl? Yeah, you don't even. I mean, if, if do you have do, do you have a file? I don't even need a physical copy. I mean, if it's probably not digital. Oh, well, I'm sure it is. Somewhere. Okay, from it, it, it starts, it is. It's from Berkshire Regional. Yeah. yeah, but it starts as a digital file. Can can someone ask contact regional planning and ask them for a digital file? I mean, I'm happy to have the conversation, Jennifer, but you know, with some, someone. But I don't. I, I don't. I mean, I. I guess I. You know, I don't know. I mean, if, if there's any. Okay. Why do you talk to? What's the purpose? For I don't know. If we just decided that this would, if we wanted this kind of open space preservation thing on larger acres and not necessarily on, you know, twenty acre somebody's backyard if they wanted to put in. I mean, it, do we want this to be just for bigger, the open space um, preservation to be just the bigger areas? I mean, that's sort of the question here. We now can technically have 20 acres. Is that too small to- Well, that's a very- It is a, very, it is a, it is a big impact on, on how, what the scope of the, of the application of a potential bylaw would be. Yeah, the larger. I mean, I think that's just what we're deciding. The larger the number, the the uh, fewer properties are affected. I mean, by definition. Right, I, and the more open, you know, like. But but the the on the other hand, yeah, the larger properties would then be subject to this to, bylaw and uh, the preservation of. Right. By definition, larger amounts of open space. Yeah, I mean, we originally said twenty, but. I guess the question you just threw out is 20 too small. Is 20 the right number? That's that was, what we wanted to that say. That was my question. That was an open ended thing we never my, my, my inclination would be with Kate, you know, to 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 you know, it, I mean, I mean these these things could be changed, but you know, but I mean the uh, but I mean to start by by start by looking at larger parcels where the amount of effort and and um, you know is is going to be is going to be, you know, potentially more valuable. Yeah. yeah, and the historic might be in how we, yeah. how That's we, it. do we need to put that in there though? Yes. About yes. No, 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 no. No. Oh. no, I think the language as stands is fine. Uh, the question is, is it 20 acres or some other, some mm -hmm. other, oh, I think it's some other one. figure. I like to go with 60. It's a lot bigger. It's not too big. It's Sort of like uh, Goldilocks, not too hot, not too cold. It's <laughs> just, you know. Yeah, there's not many 60. And look what happens to Goldilocks. Going once, going twice. So how many are there, how many lots are there on that map in, in Asia? <laughs> in, in, uh, from, how many are there from Asia? Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think you ought to, you know, you ought to know the numbers before. Um, it would be good to know. What the numbers are on those parcels? How many are there? What's the impact? I have, I have, I have, I have the printout from Michael Blay of of the of the of the uh, of the acreage and so forth. Unfortunately, it's not in front of me. <laughs> so, but uh, um, back in my office, and my recollection of it is is, is foggy. But it, it, there there are definitely very some some interesting cutoffs as you as you as you as you go up in terms of like you know um, large parcels. Um, I think there are only nine that are properties that are 80 acres or above. Only nine? Really? Uh, maybe 10. 80 or above, yeah. They're 80 or above. Kripalu, think, BSO, High Lawn Farm, uh, Freelingheisen, Stokes, um, uh, DeSisto, Sheehan, uh, Charles Stowe. Swan. Swan, Marion Fathers, yeah, and uh, uh, I think that's it. And what about 60 and over? There are a lot more. There's, um, well, it's the next color green. It's this like color, that. one. one. Yeah. Let's start two. from the bottom. Like this? Yep. One, two, three, that's... four, five, five. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait a minute. Ten. Sorry. Ten. Yeah. Uh, eleven. Eleven. Twelve. Twelve. Is 
that the right color? No. Um, um, this is 12. Colors are hard. This is 12. Okay. 13, 14, 15. These colors are so hard yeah, to tell. Yeah, it's a little hard to, <laughs> about 15, <laughs> between 60 and 80. So uh, 25 round numbers of uh, properties greater than 60 acres, or 60 acres or greater. That that includes the uh, the 80 acres? Yes, okay. yeah. 10 of those and 15 of the of the 60 to 80s. Okay. Round, you know, don't, don't, uh, this is not, uh, scientific. scientific, but it's so we're not talking affecting a ton of people, I guess. You know, and what is the, most of us won't ever really <laughs> deal with what does the white indicate? The white indicates, um, less than 10 acres, just like people's houses, um, or conserve. Would it be conserved or town think land? Or town land? Or town land. Like not. My, town my house is in a white bubble. space. Yeah, I think it's like people that just own houses, just smaller acreages than 10. And. Well, I, 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 this is, as a remark, I think that, you know, I mean, I, I love a map and the, um, and the, uh, you know, and, and and talking to uh, regional planning about the relationship between, you know, these large parcel, you know, the, these parcel maps and the um, uh, and and existing cons conservation land, I think is 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 an important thing. Yeah, um, conservation know, land was not included in this. I don't know. I don't know what our relationship is. I mean, or how these things are shared, everything's moved so quickly. But I mean, I spent 10 years working on uh, a, a conservation land map for the town of Stockbridge, which is now probably, you know, you know, it's probably 10 years ago. So it's quite out of, it's out of date, but, um, uh, but that was a very interesting project. Uh, but, but this is, this is, you know, this is sort of where we have potential for conservation and how that makes, where that makes sense, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. That's, that's what we're trying to get at. Yeah. yeah, I think we asked when we asked them to make this map, it was to to point out the larger acreages in town, and maybe ones that were not conserved. You know, but like what was buildable? Because we just got this map four or five years ago when we first started talking about um, this. Is not this is pretty new. When we first started talking about this bylaw, we got this map, this map was made. in two thousand. We got this map in two thousand nineteen. In when? 19. The end of two thousand nineteen. Okay, so right. yeah, so this is pretty current. Yeah, I doubt there are many changes um, since then. Very few. My recollection was the map did show um, Chapter sixty one and conservation restrictions. I don't think it shows this that. Yeah, it doesn't see. show that. I don't think it shows those properties yeah. on here. But those maps, those maps are readily available, and you know, and 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 doing some overlay and some study with that would be, you know, I mean, I mean do you we, see? Do have, we do now have our consultant. Johnson's probably yes. on this. Right okay. here, it's all wide open. Okay, so it's white. And that's why I asked. That's because it's conserved, right? It's got a farm concentration. On it. Well, it does, and that's why I wonder what these that's other why, yeah. big areas of white um, are. It's it's con conservation. These, this so, is, there is there was conservation time. restrictions on the map, and if you look, there's probably a, a key that will show you. There is um, no there's key. no conservation <laughs> restrictions Not on, on this, map. this map. There's no key. This is made specifically for other than uh, lot si colors for lot sizes. But I think something that's conserved. That's under um, 61 or any of that is not shown on this as no, a large white. lot. Yeah, that's well, part, white. part of the white. Yeah. Along with I, vote for, I vote for better maps. And also, um, it's important to remember that uh, Chapter 61 uh, does not provide for permanent conservation. It's it's strictly a tax abatement. Um, right. And uh, there's no can be, yeah. There's no, yeah. There's no reason why, why that, that land couldn't be developed. Good point. Yeah. 
It, yeah, okay. you can get out of a 61. So 60 to The 80. owner can get out of a 61. So we're talking 60 to 80? Yeah, 60. Anything so about 60? 60 and up. Anything about 60? Anything at 60 and up, and there seem to be approximately 25 properties that would fit in that um, range of 60 or more acres. Um, I don't know what I'm okay with. Hard time with it. determining which acreage is appropriate and which isn't really. Mm -hmm. um, can I skip unless somebody else has items in the meantime? To um, 6.24.3, bottom of page two. Oh, Bill, page. How are you? What's your plan here? Are you going through this? member by member or are you just oh, I'm, no i'm just if you've got something speak up i thought okay. we'd do it i thought we'd do it starting at the beginning and instead of jumping around from page six to page two to page four but however you want to do it i i'm not trying to guide the process i just want to see if we can identify those points that where we're still um not in agreement uh apart from you know, your well-stated view that you don't like the bylaw at all. I, I, I want to see if there are individual elements of the bylaw that we can either agree to differ on and, and somehow put aside for later discussion, or we can kind of clear up. It looks like this first item, we might have come to an agreement at 60 acres. I'm going to stand by 80. Okay. Does everybody else think 60 works? I'm not asking for a vote. I'm just saying. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I think it's a good number. Um, I, I agree. I, you know, I, I, I would love to, you know, get a little, be able to dig a little deeper into, into some of those maps. But, that's but it doesn't matter whose it is. Let's cut. It's amount of it's land. Yeah. It's an amount of land. It doesn't really matter who it is or where it is. It's, it's how many, how big a piece of land. Should well, this I, agree, I agree with you. The equity of this um, is an important idea behind any kind of um, behind any kind of by proposing any kind of bylaw. And um, I feel like it's important for us to be perceived, you know, to, 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 to have, have a bylaw revision be perceived as not being targeted at some, you know, specific, you know, at, 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 at anyone, at, at, at anyone specifically, but rather at like larger goals for the town. Yeah, that's why yeah. it doesn't matter whose property it is or where no, you, know, it's, you need. But I, I take Carl's point. If, if you're at a disadvantage because you don't have this map. And um, well, and other maps, too. I mean, I think there's some other things where, like, there is a lot of conservation land in town and, and, and you know, sort of, you know, I mean, I, I mean, again, it's like, you know, we're not in the who and where business, but you know, at the same time, I think, you know, ultimately when you get down to specifics, it's, it's, it's going to be affecting people very, you know, and potentially, and, 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 and like, you know, taking the helicopter view is, 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 is important. Well, sure. I think some, somebody has to make a decision at some point, And I think maybe we're just making too big a deal of this. Do we need to just, I mean, the nitty gritty, kind of gets down to specifics and people and, and we don't want to do that. We need to just look at a size of land no matter who, you know, like. Is that what you're saying? I don't I'm think that's what you're saying. I'm not, you know? I'm not disagreeing. I just, I mean, I'm just, I just, I just don't know that I have enough, you know, I mean, I think 60 sounds like a good number you know 20 wasn't such a terrible number i mean but you know but they, but, but but i mean i we i i'm i'm i i still feel personally that i don't have enough kind of information to like have a big picture so yeah right yeah. Big, and i just feel that you know you all heard me talk about inter incremental growth this is um a really huge unknown so my preference is to um sort of take um you know, sort of a, a more cautious approach to it all. <clears throat> well, again, when you make a bylaw, you don't. We've we've identified uh, in in rough terms 
that yeah. if it's 60 acres, there are there are approximately 25 properties that would be affected. Right, but it's, you know, what's the total acreage in relation to um, the acreage of the town? That's a number I'd be interested to know. You know, what percentage of the town are we actually looking at from the land standpoint? Yeah, I, I, I don't know that we could get those numbers, yeah, but- sure, um, I'm sure can, you just need the acreage of all the matter. properties. It does matter because it, it speaks to the percentage of the town that is now um, impacted by this, this bylaw, however it may, play out. I mean, you know, when it plays out well, but um, if it doesn't play out well, then it, it speaks to the um, the chunk of change in terms of land in, in Stockbridge that will be impacted. I move to the next. Okay. So um, I'm going to go back a little bit and, and Bill, I just don't know how granular you want to get here, but um, backing up to the purpose. Yeah. Um, in the uh, first sentence where it says the primary purpose of this section is to permanently protect an interconnected network of conservation lands and historic resources of Stockbridge while providing options for the appropriate redevelopment, reuse and conservation and so on. Um, appropriate strikes me as subjective. Yep, and, it is. And then um, I would say that would you rather strike that? Um, I think that's uh, actually useful in that in that uh, sentence. How how do you feel it's useful? Well, if you if you delete it, then it's just redevelopment, reuse. There's there's no no limit on it. This is appropriate. Yes, I take it that your appropriate may not be the same as my appropriate, but at least. The word is there for purposes of, um, of kind of getting a sense of uh, appropriate versus inappropriate, um, and we can argue over um, particular developments that or redevelopments that may or may not be appropriate. But if we take that word out, um, I, I don't think we. All right. Well, I'm, I'm just, sure. I'm just, you know, you don't. I'm just mentioning it. You know, I think that's what we're doing here. So I'm just going to yeah. mention it. Okay. And um, I don't think we need to get into a big discussion of it. And the other thing that I would remove is, um, I mean, I just sort of wonder at the very, the very last sentence in the purpose. Um, additionally, they help maintain um, commercial forestry, forestry as a viable agricultural activity. I mean, is this a conservation bylaw or a commerce bylaw? And that's a question I have for you. I don't, I don't quite see why that is in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good question. Commercial forestry is. Well, it is a combined bylaw because if we're going to combine it with the cottage era, then it is a combined thing. That's why I think it's a contradiction. That's why I think we should have kept it separate because they're two different things. One is trying to save land and one is trying to develop land. I and agree I with you, Wayne. I totally I, agree. And Jeff, I just, is just think that we, we are combining two things that don't necessarily go together, but you know, we've, we've made that decision, so I guess we've got to fight through it. But to me, that's where that's where you you kind of come to a loggerheads. Have we made that decision? No, we yeah. hadn't made that but decision. We, but yeah. we said we were going to pursue it with the intention of talking about both. Yeah, but we didn't. Go ahead. Sorry, Wayne. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I, I just, we, we said it, I think it was the, the last meeting. We said, again, we, we switched back again. Initially, we were going to keep them separate. Mm -hmm. And then at the last meeting, we said, no, it makes sense to, to talk about them both. No, if, I, two meetings ago, um, Bill made a motion to discuss it both, but he, we didn't, there was no decision. And I specifically asked about that. 
about combining them because that was a big concern for me as well, Wayne. And, you know, Jeff had not required, he had not recommended combining the two bylaws. He was pretty clear about that, that he did not recommend combining them. Well, he's vacillated too because he yeah. has recommended yeah. doing well, he said The last time he said that he could put it in here and it wouldn't be effective. I think so. Right. That's so. what he said, yeah. But, but then you come to a question like this, you know, which is it? Because how are we going to how are we going to separate the two? One asks for commercial opportunities for Forrester or whatever other commercial activity, and the other asks for preservation of land. Well, I think that, that what Jeff had said was that it would be just another section, and there's not not part. I don't think it would be you know part of six point two point four, but I think it would be another. Uh, my sense was there would be another category. Um, Bill, can you ask Jeff for clarification? Um, about this language about commercial forestry? No, mm -hmm. about the conversation we're having now about um, whether we can combine. Two bylaws. Oh, I think we're completely free as a board. Uh, Jeff will do what we want. If we, want, if we decide we want the uh, Cottagera State Bylaw to be bolted onto this one, he'll do that. If we decide we want a separate bylaw for reasons that uh, Wayne and others have said, uh, he'll do that. I think he's, uh, he may have recommended one way or the other, but we are free to, I mean, he works for us. We don't work for him. So if- I guess my comment would be that um, we hired him as a, as a consultant because, I mean, one member of the board made the argument that we didn't have the expertise our, ourselves so if he recommends um, keeping them separate, I think we should listen to that, at least listen to that, at least hear that. But, he, I, but I know he has also said he could write this bylaw as a, a, a bolting it right on, mm -hmm. a cottage era state bylaw, bolting it right onto this bylaw. He said that. I Can think it's up to us. I'm just asking you to ask him for clarification. I would value that. Maybe just how we would do it. You okay. know, where would we see it? Didn't we see it on one of our drafts that he had done that? Well, he sent around a draft of the Cottage Era mm -hmm. State Bylaw um, a couple of meetings ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then we went to the next step, which was to overlay this bylaw on oh. a potential development like DeSisto. And <laughs> It, it reduced it so dramatically that it was ridiculous. I mean, it, it brought brought it down to like 34 units on the whole property or something. And, oh, and right. so it doesn't. But he wasn't know. doing that. He wasn't doing that as a as a cottage era. He was just doing that in, a diff, in the context of a different conversation. Right, but using this as the outline. Mm -hmm. That's my point. This is the, this was the outline that if you overlay this onto that, all of a sudden. But he wasn't talking, he was just using it as a property, not as a, not, I mean, not as the DeSisto. Um, no, he didn't, you're right, but he took what numbers would have been allowed and that pretty much told the story. So, you, you know, you get back to that part of it where do you go from there? Because if that's his answer, that, you know, 34 units or whatever that number was that he came up with, if that's where Cottagera ends up, I'm out. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that's that's not practical for, uh, for that developer, clearly. It's so different. I mean, we know Sheehan needs to make uh, some adjustments, but that is, would clearly be a non-starter. Um, it's not necessarily a non-starter. I mean, it depends uh, on how it's done. And, you know, he bought that property. Well, I'm not gonna go into it. He could put uh, McMansions on four acres and scatter them all over that property mm -hmm. without our approval. Very, very mm -hmm. well. That's what I would and he, you know, maybe he'll do that. I don't think we'd want him to do that. Make, but do we need to make a decision whether we want this? No, 
true okay. of one. Yeah. No, I, I don't think so. Um, okay. I, I think we've. A decision on what? On whether to go separate with the Cottage Era State bylaw. You think we should just continue on with this and see what he does? With well, King said to ask Jeff what his recommendation yeah. is and what his pros and cons are yeah. for doing yeah. it one way or the other. If he feels. I will do so. Um, anything else on page one from anybody? Um, yeah. But I'd like to let other people speak. So all I find is an email from Jennifer saying, did you get this referring to an email from you, Bill? Um, um, but I, I honestly, I don't have a draft. You don't I have a draft of the bylaw? I don't, no. Oh, yeah. well, we can fix that. I'm sorry. Um, okay, that'd be great. Jennifer, could you say a little stupid sitting here? Yeah, we all got them. Yeah. I said I th Jennifer thought she sent it around, um, but she'll sure, send sure. No, no, no. I mean, it's just, I, 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 I've been checking my various inboxes and the town website and so forth, and I, I don't have it. Maybe it ended up in your spam box. Um, I hope not. <laughs> How about just posting it, it posting it to the town website above the agenda so that it's just right there. Exactly. For I, I think I it sure. already is Number six is, yeah. I thought this draft was on the website. But no, it's not. Is it? Maybe not. I don't know. You know what, no. Jennifer? I thought we weren't going to do it until we... I haven't looked recently, so I'd, I'd have to... Yeah, I thought we were going to do it until we knew well, what Bill, we wanted. Well, can you, Bill, can you see that it... Can you ask to have it posted? You know how many boards post a meeting packet with the agenda? Could you ask to have that done for these drafts? Oh, yeah. For the ADUs too, I don't, what's the status of the ADUs? I don't want to change the subject. But... Well, nothing's happening until um, the contract with um, BRPC is uh, finalized. Okay, so, you know, in the meantime, can you, can you ask that this draft be posted along with the agenda so it's just very easy to find? I know, I've just heard from a number of people having email problems with the town email. And I know sometimes with my town email, all of a sudden um, I get like eight emails on my, on my computer that were sent at varying times, you know, even early in the morning. And I don't get them until like hours later. Oh, Jennifer, is this an issue with, with me not checking my town email? Is that the problem? <laughs> I, I send it to your Gmail account. Yeah. Okay. No, I get mail from you all the time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, all right. I didn't I'm think sorry. we were going to put anything out there until we knew more what we wanted to say. Well, I mean, we've discussed draft six at open meeting. Um, well, you know, I mean, another thing about draft six um, is that, you know, one concern I have just generally is that it seems that draft six is based on um, the misunderstanding um, because Jeff was told by um, one member of the board that a decision had been made by the planning board to go with density neutral when that wasn't the case. So it seems that draft six is based on um, density neutral. And that's, you know, that's a concern for me that- Again, uh, the operative word, Kate, is draft. Right, but if the entire draft is based on that, which it seems to be, I'm just wondering if we should. Well, the, no, the entire draft, in. the entire draft is not based on that, but that is an important part. That's partly why I wanted to talk about it. Mm. These okay. individual items today. Okay. Uh, I All agree right, with so you. Density neutral versus density negative is a big issue, and we okay. we, we need to All sort right. through. I do think, though, Nancy, to your point. Draft six is no no secret. Um, the public has seen it. Um, it, it. As long as it's marked draft, draft number six, um, in big, bold letters, um, nobody can uh, uh, mistake this for something that's set in stone already and that, the, you know, we're going to set it up in this form to town meeting. Okay. You, do you see? I do see, but there's people out there who think that it is the final. 
Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to do but I put know. draft on it. You know? I know. I, I hear you. I'm just I mean, when I see that. a document with the word draft on it, I think, okay, <laughs> I guess this isn't final. <laughs> I know. I, I find myself defending it yeah. as being just a draft, and it's not the final draft. It isn't the final draft. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be a draft seven and probably well, eight. So, Bill, if you want me to, um, if no one else says anything on page one, I'll, I'll mention some other concerns for me there. Go ahead. Okay, so um, section C. Yep. Their purposes under purposes and applicability. Yep. Um, section C um, is a concern for me in that it's, it's, there's, there's no limit on special permitting power um, to, in terms of the planning board to permit in excess of the base number. So um, this is, reads to me as a guideline and by special permit, it sounds to me like projects could be of unlimited density. And that is a uh, concern for me, and I just wonder how that is better than our our existing subdivision bylaw. And then um, the next. Sorry, can we just to be clear about that? You're talking about six point two four point one C. Um, non subdivision on. applications, or am I? Yeah, where, so where? it's under six point two four point one. Um, C. Mm -hmm. Non-subdivision non applications. Correct, non-subdivision applications. Yeah. So, so that's a concern for me. And then under D, waivers, um, it sounds to me like there are no limitations on what the planning board could potentially approve by special permit. That's a concern, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely, um, I mean, all the benefits of this bylaw appear to me to be optional and not required to be followed by the planning board. So that's, that's another concern. And then finally, um, the second sentence reads, such deviations may be approved by waiver if the applicant demonstrates that the proposed alternative development configuration provides adequate protection. Um, I would suggest defining adequate. I mean, <laughs> Where are you? Still second, under D. second sentence. Under D. Second sentence under D. Okay. Well, there's prescriptions all through this thing about who I inspects mean, wetlands, who inspects different pieces of the property throughout before they get approval. So wouldn't we, wouldn't we go to those folks that mm -hmm. inspect it on a conservation-minded mm -hmm. approach and trust what they say? Yeah. Well, we'll get to that. <laughs> but I mean- Oh my God. It, it okay. Also, I mean, my question is, does a special permit mean that the planning board can approve non-residential uses? You know, things like hotels, motels, restaurants, cannabis retail, wholesale facilities, bars, warehouses, you know, conference centers. Um, I would want some clarification on that. So that's the section D under waivers. And then section E, is that on page one? No. Well, page two. Okay. E is on page two. Okay, I'll wait, then I'll wait. I've got stuff for page two. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, you asked, Bill, so I, I did my homework. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, what's on page two? I mean, I'm kind of hoping that we're going to wrap things up by 8.30 because it's two hours, and I remember my boss telling me that no meeting um, is productive after an hour. <laughs> so we'll go as far as we can um, at, and stop at 8.30. So what's Thank on you. page two? Um, page two... I guess my concern is that section E appears to strip the select board of its authority to permit a 
a wide range of uses as found in the current use uses table. Um, so this seems like a really drastic change uh -huh. in how to how the town has permitted projects in the past. That's okay. Is that a, is that a bad thing? Yeah, that's yeah. I think it is a bad thing. I think you know the balance of power in Stockbridge um, has has done well by the town, and there so, was a reason. There is a reason for that balance of power, and um, you know that was to to keep things keep things. Uh, well, I think it speaks for itself. What's the balance Are of power between who and who? It's the balance of power between the planning board and the select board. As we currently have things set up, um, for example, the Lincoln Pond Overlay District bylaw is um, handled by both the planning board and the select board. And I know the planning board um, would like to handle um, this bylaw, but I think it would be good to have a balance of power and I'll leave it at that. Are you talking about C24, no, 624? E, e. E. Oh, E on the top. Oh, yeah. okay. Consolidated special permits? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I mean, this has been town policy that the select board and the planning board handle special permits um, for a very long time, as long as there's been zoning in Stockbridge. So how do you want to change that E? What, what are you thinking, Kate? What should that say? Um, I would have to, you know, I'd have to work on it. I can't really, I'm not, a, I'm not I don't draft bylaw wording, but um, I think this is, this is a concern and, I, you know, I'm mentioning it for that reason. Well, now I have, wait a second. I've, I've got this draft in front of me now, finally. And uh, from the May meeting, I'm not even sure if I was, you know, like officially sworn in by that point. But the, uh, but the, uh, but it's page two, and there's an E section. Yeah, at the top. At the very top. It's the last one of of. Oh, I see. Okay, very top. Okay. Two. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry, my eyes have been. Yeah, or one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm zooming in. Oh, right. I guess I, I I hear what you're saying about history, but the planning board is elected just like the select board. Our meetings are public just like the select boards. Our procedures are laid out in the bylaws. Um, Things are slow to change. I mean, look, earlier in the meeting, I couldn't really even get meeting materials, an agreement that the meeting materials be posted to the website the way most people do. So it just feels like um, there's a... Well, I, I, I guess my question is, what's the, what's the, what's the point of that? I of what? Of, of, of the E section here. I mean, I mean what, what is the intention? It gives the planning board the authority to approve or disapprove. Okay. My question would be, why does almost every single other town in the state give it to the planning board? And we're one of what, three or four that don't? And if we're gonna to go to where, what other people do with posting and what have you, if we're gonna do it with what other people do, why does it work so well there and not here? Well, Stockbridge is different. And Always. You know, yeah. You're talking about- <laughs> Reliably so. Yeah. You're talking about two different things, Wayne. You're talking about administrative and you're talking about zoning. Those are very different. Very well, different. you just said it though. Stockbridge always wants to be different. And I don't know if that's always beneficial. I didn't say Stockbridge. that Stockbridge wants to be different. I said Stockbridge is different. And, you know, and I think that what Stockbridge has is, look, we've got one of the lowest tax rates in the Commonwealth, um, growing population. Um, you know, I. I know that some some are unhappy. I know that some of you are unhappy with Stockbridge, but I think it's great the way it is. I think we've done quite well. I, I think that's a slur, uh, Kate. Uh, forgive me. Uh, when have I said I'm unhappy with Stockbridge? When has Marie said she's unhappy with Stockbridge? When has Wayne said she, he's unhappy with Stockbridge? It's not a slur. Just watch your watch your language. 
It's not I'm as not unhappy with Stockbridge. Wayne just expressed that, you know, why do we have to do things differently? And that sounds different from saying I'm unhappy with Stockbridge, which is what you accused us of. I resent that. I don't accuse anyone of every. Well, oh, you just did. You just I'm, did. I'm Let's move you. on. Let's move on to 6.24.2, if you have anything else. Well, who's accusing people of, of something? Excuse me. Okay, let's move on. What would you say about it, Bill? What? About the 6.24.2. 6 6 we're going through it, you know, sequentially. So oh, if okay. anybody has anything on 6.24.2. Um, yeah, no, I, I just have my, my, my little bugaboo, which is, you know, and, and this is actually a decision which does not have to be worked out right now. But um, we have two organizations, the Stockbridge Historic Commission and the and the and the historic preservation commission, um, uh, which are which are different animals, and 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 the uh, the 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 bylaw is a little sloppy in terms of like making a distinction between them, and um, uh, you know I'm not really advocating for one thing or another, except that I would say that the historic preservation commission has a relationship. Uh, to you know, is a, is, is 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 has a has a relationship with the planning board um, uh, where we really are officially you know intended to exist to report to this board, and uh, so you know I, it might be you know it might be better equipped in terms of of of, of that none of none of the uh, uh, none of the bylaws is is is, is putting a you know, a great deal of weight on, 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 on the decisions of, 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 of the historic commission or historic preservation commission. But I, I still would like it to be like, it's like one or the other, you know, I mean, I, you know, I, yeah. are you talking or, or about, both. I mean, you could say both, you know, really that's fine too. I mean, are you talking about C Carl? Yeah. Um, 6 yeah, point. yeah. No, there's C? a, there's a, yeah, Number there's a couple, probably some other spots too. Basically whenever, 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 whenever the, whenever historic, commissions are mentioned it's like sort of you know it's sort of it's random as to which one yes yeah, I think it does need to be clear that. is it the commission or the committee or it could be both you know i mean but it still would like i, I just want people to I, I just like would like the bylaw to acknowledge the reality of of how some of these decisions are made in town. no i agree what do you think so it should be carl what's the proper wording? As, yeah what should it be what do you think it should be well um, i'm the chairman of the historic because preservation you've been commission, on both. So i'm going to say I, that it would be should be the historic preservation commission okay commission not committee preservation. okay not so we'll insert district. we'll insert the word preservation between historic and commission on line three there you go. I'm happy. Yeah, and and take out historic district committee. Well, that says if applicable. Well, that no historic and district it, committee is also like we don't have one. So if it's applicable, it says okay. if it's applicable, but we can okay. just delete it. Okay. We'll just delete. Okay. Okay. Other points on page two. Ah, uh, let's see. Oh God. <laughs> Does someone else want to speak? Go ahead. Do you want to hear what I have to say or not? Yeah, I said go ahead. Okay. Um, under section, uh. I can hear you guys, so I'm going to hold for now. <laughs> what? No, no, no. I'm, I'm just. I'm. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm tired. Too. I mean, I think we should. I actually make a motion that we adjourn. It's eight thirty. Is any? Is there a second to that motion? Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank I you all. Do my I'll do my homework better the next time. Now that I've got everything in hand here. So sorry, I just, I, I, I thank you for bearing with me. Thank you all.